Okay, so welcome to the last seminar on uh, discrete math. And uh, today we'll um, briefly discuss the last uh, uh, sheet of exercises, which we was on P and then P. And uh, then we'll go to the coloring, which is today. So um, I will post the, uh, so we have the previous, I will just post it on Zoom, so in the chat. So this is the previous one on P and then P. We did most of that, so we just one problem left. And the coloring, the task for today, so you can actually take this for the people who are sitting here. I see one printed in color, by the way. Oh, well, because otherwise <laughs> you couldn't read it. And uh, this is the coloring for today. So I will take one from there. Um, okay, so let's start with the uh, P and P. And uh, please correct me yep, if I am wrong, but I believe that we have did, done everything except for problem number two, right? about independent sets, clicks, vertex covering, etc. Yep. Right? This is the questions of reducibility. So um, let me briefly recall the uh, definitions. So we have the following three. We have We have independent set, we have a click, and we have vertex cover. So uh, let us uh, uh, briefly recall what does this mean. So what is an independent set? So yeah, what are the parameters? So now we have two parameters of our decision problem. So the first parameter is the graph G, and the second parameter is the natural number K. So G is a graph, K is a natural number. And now uh, let us uh, uh, look at the stuff which we have here. So uh, what is an independent, yeah, we're talking about independent sets of size k. So what is an independent set? In an undirected graph, the independent set is a set such that no two versions of this set are connected. So, so this, is, this is an independent set of questions. So suppose we have a graph, something like this, but many things are connected here. But for example, this set is independent. So no edge inside, right? So next, what is a click? So a click is opposite. A click in a graph is a subset. So this is independent set. So a click is a subset in which any two vertices are connected with each other. So suppose we make that up. For example, this, this vertex, this vertex, this vertex, all of them are interconnected. To make things more interesting, we could also add the fourth one, for example, here. So this uh, subset of vertices is a click. This is a click. So any vertices are connected, any two vertices are connected is a click, no two vertices are connected, this is an independent set. And now the interesting thing is what is a vertex covering? So what is a vertex cover? Let's again recall the formal definition, it is in the previous sheet, that um, it's a set U that every edge has at least one end that belongs to you. So, um, Let me draw, draw another graph. So here is some graph. So 
how can we construct a vertex covering? So we have to take from this triangle, we have to take at least three vert two vertices, right? Otherwise, we can cover the triangle. So we have, for example, we take this one as a central one, this one. So now these edges are covered, these edges are covered, but if this edge is not covered, so say we take this one. This edge has two, but it's inevitable. So what edges are still not covered? Well, this and this, right? So we can take this one. This is a vertex covering of four vertices. So this is here. This is a vertex covering. So uh, these problems are usually viewed as sort of optimization problems, which we did not discuss in this, uh, this class, but uh, it's easy. So there are uh, each vertex cover or each clique or each independent set in this parameter K, and usually we are interested in maximizing or minimizing it. So uh, when we are talking about cliques or independent sets, we usually maximize it because the bigger the clique is, the more they interest it. For vertex coverings, the usual thing we wish it is to minimize this parameter because uh, if we have a vertex cover, then if we extend it, we get still a vertex cover, but we want to find a small one. So this is sort of a civilian problem that we have to put uh, policemen on the crosses in the city to survey all the streets which are supposed to be direct. And here there's this click is something which is very, very tight and interconnected. And Independent set is independent. So, uh, just as a spoiler, all these problems are NP complete. Um, if we have time, maybe we'll prove it, but it's not the task which we were asked. The task was the following if we say uh, that independent set is reducible to both of them. So, the point A was that independent set. Is reducible to click. It's visible here, yeah, it's visible. And the second then independent set is reducible to a vertex scale. Yeah. So did anyone of you solve this? Did it pro provide your reduction? So suppose we know how to solve a vertex cover, how to find whether the vertex cover of given cardinality exists. How can you solve independent set problem? No, no, they're all NP complete. They, it's all conditional results. Uh, so, yeah, as this part, it's all the three problems, or they, first, let's start with the beginning. All these problems belong to NP, right? Because if you are given a set, then checking that this set is independent is really easy. You just take any pair of vertices and check there is no edge. The same for click, you check there is an edge. For vertex cover, well, you just uh, write down all the edges and see that all the edges are covered. So, all these problems, they belong to NP. This is the first consideration we have to think about. The second consideration that, as a spoiler, I say that they're all NP complete. So therefore, um, trying to solve them polynomially is uh, actually hopeless. If you wish to solve them polynomially, you can do this, but uh, no good things will come. So you, you won't succeed. Unless P equals NP, and you will get this billion trade. So, uh, Therefore, this, these two uh, questions which were formulated in your task, they are conditional in the sense that um, the, uh, they're conditional in the sense that you should reduce this problem to this one. So you are not asked just to solve the independent set problem. You are asked to uh, Solve it given that you have a solution for that. This is a reduction. So suppose you know how to find clicks in graphs of given size. 
How can you find independent sets? Yeah, the complement, right. So yeah, the graph is not a multigraph, not a pseudo graph. Well, in this setting, it doesn't matter because, oh well, formally speaking, if you have loops, you your vertex cannot be in the independent set. We will do without that, without loops. If it's a multigraph, it is nothing special because it doesn't matter how many edges are there. We'll talk only about connectedness. And you can say that V, I don't know, we will call it, I don't know, we'll call it U. So uh, U as a subset of the set of vertices is a, a, an independent set in G if and only if U is a click in the complement G bar. The G bar is the complement graph. So, for example, if you have a graph like that, well, there is no, well, there are no trivial independent sets. For example, you will have this set which is one, two, and it's on. Yeah. Not an interesting example, right? But uh, if you remove, say, this edge, you will get. A more interesting example, which is um, this one, this one, and this one. So this is an independent set, right? No two vertices inside this set are connected. Now we consider the complement, the dual graph. So this is this one is complement. Okay, so what is in the what's the complement? So you should connect everything which was not connected in the original graph. Or we can also suppose that the no, okay, we'll just write the complement. So the complement is like this one. This is this, this, and this. The blue graph is the complement one. And you see that inside the blue graph, this is a triangle, this is a click. So the clicks in blue graph is the same as independent sets in the green graph, in the black graph. So this means that the reduction is as follows. So the reduction here is the following. So you have to take F here. You will take F of GK, which is just G bar with the same K here. And this means that you just take the graph, you take its complement, and inside this complement, you compute the click. Great. So um, now, the funny thing is that this is actually a by reduction. It's also a reduction in the opposite direction. If you want to solve the click, you can apply the same reduction and reduce to independent. So this is for point A. Now for vertex coverings. What about vertex coverings? How can you reduce independent set to vertex cover? We wish to solve the independent set problem of size k. Well, it, it's similar, but it's, it could, could not be the same because vertex cover is not the same as click. But it's also an idea of the reality. So, okay, let me redraw this graph. So I will have this. Suppose I have an independent set. So it's so this is a graph. And I will have the independent set. So here is one, two, um, for example, three, and say four. These are independent, right? Maybe I don't pretend that it's a maximum. So how I suppose I can find this. How can I find this using the notion of vertex cover? Oh, no, it's not 
vertex cover so but how can you obtain a vertex cover from this independence all the vertices which were not used yeah exactly so if i take these vertices which were not used in the independent set then these form a vertex cover right because how could an edge be outside so okay i claim that well, let me just form formulate this claim that u again a subset of v is an independent set if and only if it's complement independent set in g is a vertex cover in g so it's again a complement but here we did the complement of the graph and here we keep the graph but take the complement of the set why is it so okay suppose this is a vertex cover and we take the complement so suppose there is an edge this edge could not be between two vertices of the cover because this is a, it is in a, of, of you because this is an independent set therefore it should uh, visit some of the vertices of these uh, blue crosses dually if you have a if this stuff is an, uh, a vertex cover then again if we take two vertices which are outside we cannot have an edge there so this is duality and now what is the reducing function here so this function f1 what is the reducing function f2 we're given a pair of V bar. Yeah? V bar. No, this is what, what does it mean V bar? V is the set of all vertices. Yes, v bar, uh, you, you want to want to add U bar. Yes. yes, yes, but uh, you don't have U. The problem is that here you don't have U because your U is your answer. It's not your input data. So, but let's think. So, you know, here uh, at this point, you by 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 type, you should have just a natural number. So you want to find a, an independent set which has k vertices and you reduce it to finding a vertex cover uh, what is the answer yeah what should we write here well g bar again so the natural number it should not be a graph or a set or the second parameter is just a number. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, this, if this has a vertex cover, oh, okay, if, if it has an independent set of cardinality, so suppose the k, the k vertices is here, then there are n minus k vertices here, where n is the size. So, yeah, and this is. Yeah, okay, but it's still recording, so it's okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, 
Great. Now we are we are finished with the previous task, and now we're going to the next one. So today we have the final class, and uh, therefore we uh, will try to do all these things. Uh, so remember the coloring thing. Uh, I printed it in color because otherwise uh, it's, uh, you couldn't use it. So um, the first thing we actually discussed it last time. Let's briefly recall. So what again? Uh, let me first do the definition. Uh, I will remove this um, Greek and the stuff like that. Mm. So um, yeah, uh, the problem of key color. So formally speaking, what is the coloring? So the coloring C, or let me call it chrom. So in Greek it is uh, color. So it's a uh, uh, the key coloring is a function from set of vertices to the set of colors. We denote our colors by natural numbers from one to k. And the idea is that if you and we are connected, then the color should be different. So this goes from the old problems of coloring maps or something like that. Edges and things should be a different color to be in a sense distinguished. So here again, you are not allowed to have loops because if you have a loop, then U is connected to itself, and this is trivially violated, and we cannot have a good coloring even in many colors. And the question is colorability. So, um, for example, if we have a, a, the, there is also a, a notion associated with the graph, the chromatic number. So the chromatic number is the minimum k that the graph is k color. Um, so, if of course, if you have a complete graph, say, on uh, n vertices, you will need n colors, because all the vertices are connected, have, have, should have different colors. On the other side, if your graph is, say, a tree, if it does not include cycles, you uh, have two colors, because you just go descending on the tree, and on each layer, you, uh, you mm, alternate your color. So, uh, one coloring is uh, basically meaningless because if your graph is one colorable, it means we don't have any edges. It's just all set of other edges. So, so two colorability is the same as bipartite. So if graph is colorable in two colors, it means that we can take two parts, the red and green one, for example, or red and blue one, and uh, these will correspond to two halves of the graph. So this is uh, k-colorable. So, and we are going to see the following. So, first thing which we did, so yeah, checking by partitionless is polynomial. And last time we did it by, I just recall it was on today's lecture, so I won't uh, stop on it too much. We show that true colorability problem is reducible to two sets by encoding the colors in, um, in uh, Boolean formula. This shows that it's polynomially decidable because this problem belongs as a decision problem belongs to. So this is this is like that. For by the way, for counting, you can think about a counting problem for that. To try to reduce problems. But it was not that easy, by the way. So um, now let's uh, just in order to warm up a bit, let's think about problem two. So problem 2a, what is an example of a graph which is colorable in k colors, but not in k minus 1? Yeah, complete graph on k vertices, right? So if you have a graph, say, of fine vertices, well, it's drawn here. If you don't think about the colors of the vertices, this is a graph called k5. So k5 is colorable in five colors, of course, but not in four colors. The same happens for us. Now let's think about b. So if a graph is k colorable but not k minus one colorable, then the number of edges is at least k k minus one divided by two. 
So by the way, k multiplied by k minus one divided by two is the size of uh, a number of edges in this graph, right? So because you have the first vertex can be chosen in, by the way, combinatorics, yeah? So uh, the first vertex can be chosen k possibility, the second k minus one, and you divide by two because each edge is counted two times. Yeah. So now let's talk about 2b. So a graph is not k minus one colorable. Why it does should it have this number of vertices? Uh, oh no, sorry, edges. Circle? No, so a circle will be three colorable. No. Of course, always. So uh, a cycle will be always three colorable. Because if it is even, it's two colorable, if it's odd, you can use an extra color color. Here is number, we are talking about graphs where are many colors. So this will be done in uh, point two and point three, and then we'll move to three colorability. Okay, why should this happen? Well, uh, yeah, I will remove an edge from full graph, some people. Um, no, but you are given a graph. The graph can have many vertices. And uh, why should it include a full graph? So, well, but the idea is as follows. So this is really the number of edges in the full graph. Maybe we could just prove that it, if a graph is uh, not k minus one colorable, then it should include a subgraph, which is the complete one, right? But this is unfortunately not the case because, for example, I draw the following graph: one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is a, a cycle of seven. So, what is the chromatic number of this graph? It's three. So if you try to color this color one, color two, color one, color two, color one, color two, and this will be color three. So this graph is a big one, but it does not include any triangle. It does not include the complete graph, and so there's no cut K3 here. So K3 is not embeddable. So this is not the good thing. But, uh, okay. So suppose uh, the graph is um, k-colorable. So this is the, suppose the graph is k-colorable. What does this mean? It's, we can move from coloring to pattern. pattern. So this means the graph is k-colorable. Uh, this means that uh, there are k, So there is there are k parts. So one, two, k. So there are k parts, and what does it mean that it is k colorable? It means that edges go only between these parts. So there's some edges here, some edges here, some edges. So this exactly means k colorability, right? But what does it mean that the graph is not colorable in k minus one? Let's think about this first. Yes, exactly. So if you have two components like this and this, another component, they're parts, like this and this one. If they are not connected, then you can identify these two colors and you will still have a good color. Therefore, since they are not 
uh, identifiable, then you have to have a, uh, an edge between them. But if you have it, you have it between any two of them, and these edges are all distinct because they come between different parts. And what is the number of such edges? It's the number of parts multiplied by the number of parts minus one divided by two. So the number of edges is greater or equal than that. And this is a, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Andre also pinched it. The, the, the number of uh, components. This and this is not a full graph because, like here, for example, we have three components. So we can redraw this graph in the following way. So we have um, edges of the type, of type one. We have edges of type two. And we have one edge of type three. And then this edge is connected here, this edge is connected here, 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 and then like this, yeah? This is an equivalent drawing of this seven vertex cycle as a, a three part graph, yeah? It, it, that, that has a morphic, it's the same. So this is color one, this is color two, this is color three. And we have these edges which connect them, there are actually plenty of them, well not plenty of them, only two of them are here. From, they go from component number three. And these two vertices are not connected, so they do not form a triangle. But you can take another edge which connects them, so it's a sort of... If you identify the vertices of the same color, you will get a real triangle. Okay, so we did... Uh, Point um, two A and B. Okay, now three. I think this is easy. That k colorability of a graph is an NP problem. Is it enough to say that you can check k colorability for the normal k colorability or k color? This is important. Well, no, I mean. You have, a, you have some coloring on the graph, you, you can check if it's correct. Or yeah, correct. exactly. This, this is the correct solution. So, um, what you really have to say, so we prove that uh, K color belongs to NP. And uh, this is shown, K, K is fixed. So K is just, uh, there's no parameters. But by the way, could I make the parameter with this? So we say that G is, uh, so we say that K color applied to graph G yields one. If and only if there exists a color such that I is a K color So chi is of polynomial size, of course. It's just a function on uh, it's just a table of colors, polynomial. B K being fixed, of course. Well, actually, of course, given a graph, it's meaningless to ask for colorability in the number of colors bigger than number three. So therefore, it's, it's polynomial, and it's the K coloring of the graph. So this is checked in polynomial time. We just take each edge, and for each edge, we have to check whether it is, uh, it has different colors in there. So therefore it belongs to NP. Well, this is easy. This is nothing special here. Also, we can show the following, that uh, if K1, it's not in the list, but I would just say, if K1 is less than K2, then, um, well, this is not that trivial, but we'll see how it works. Then K1 coloring, Is, that does this, this is really true. Maybe yes, it should be true. Uh, K1 coloring is reducible to K2 coloring. Well, we can prove it by induction just by proving the following. K coloring is also reducible to K plus 1 coloring. Let's discuss this.
do you have a reduction at hand right now? How to reduce? Uh, so the more colors you have, the harder the coloring problem. This is the idea of this question. Of course, it's sufficient to do, to do one step and the fixed numbers you can do it just then by regression. How do you think? So suppose we know how to check k plus one colorability. How can I check k colorability? We are given a graph. We want to check whether you can color it in two color in k colors, and you have an algorithm which does it for k plus one. No, well, not directly. You have to modify your graph. So given a graph, you have to provide another graph, which is k plus one colorable, even though leave the original graph is uh, k colorable. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, so from a graph, you have to provide another graph, which is uh, whose chromatic number is but one bigger, so which uh, is k plus one colorable, if only the original graph is k colorable. So you give it a graph g, and your function should give you another graph. How do we construct it? Well, come on, let's see. There's not a graph here. No. So how could you make a well, letter in the bill, of course? Okay. Well, come on. It's it's, it's not that hard. So, uh, how can you make the number of colors be greater by one? So, and uh, again, exactly. Yeah. So you have a graph here, and you just add a new vertex here, which is connected to all of this. You add it, this is a cap, and. Okay, if you can color your graph in k colors, you can just add a new color for this vertex, right? And vice versa. Um, so uh, if you can color this graph, then this vertex should have a unique color because it's connected to everything else. You cannot reuse this color. Anymore. So you remove this color, remove this vertex, and get the k color for the original color. So this means that g is k colorable. If and only if f of g is k plus one color. So uh, while you increase your uh, number of colors which you can use, you increase the complexity of your coloring problem. Which is strange because uh, one can think that if you have more colors, then it's easier to solve the coloring problem, right? But it's not the case because you should solve the decision problem. You are not required to color, but you are required to answer whether there exists a color. And if you have uh, not so many colors, like two, for example, then usually the color would not exist, and you just report that it does not exist. If you have many colors, the problem becomes trickier. And the graph is arbitrary, so you can shift to another graph which has a more interesting coloring property. So, for example, if we took a uh, Bipartite graph, and this graph, of course, is not bipartite. This is three color. And checking bipartiteness is a specific case of three colorability. So now we know that uh, two color is uh, polynomial. And if we show NP completeness for three color, we'll show NP completeness for all. OK. And now we shift to uh, the main part of today's discussion, which is the coloring of the graph. So maybe I would try to uh, turn on the 
video because I want to draw on this picture and I think it would be more convenient to draw on the screen. Then you have, and we need to do this. See when we how to put the uh, beamer on. No? I'm going to do this. So I will show the yeah, so but there's no connection right now, so it might be much. Yeah, So I will, yeah, but here I will show you something like the slides. So it's not, not the slides, really, the are just the. Uh, Uh-huh. Yeah, so these are the graph colorings and we'll share it. Graphcolor.pdf. Okay, I hope that the people on Zoom are also viewing us now. And let's uh, together, let us uh, uh, try uh, to solve this grand question. So uh, we're going to prove that three color is NP complete. And uh, let us take a glance on the uh, but it's also a gadget, like in our proof of NP hardness for oh, it's called Hamiltonian path. Yeah. Okay. So first, let's consider the following graph. Um, so uh, we have vertices x, x bar, y, and y bar, which correspond to positive and negative for x, variable x, and it's the same for variable y, and uh, now, uh, okay, we see that green is going to be something like true and red is something like false. And, uh, or not green, it's false. So, uh, of course, you will see that if X is green, then X bar should be red, right? Because this is a B here, the blue one, and uh, this triangle should be in all three colors, right? So now, uh, what are we going to do really is to um, see about this interesting vertex D. So suppose that, uh, for example, X is green and Y is, let me, let me draw it by now here, by the way. Annotate. So here is, suppose that, X is green, so what is that here? Uh, that variable X is, even though if correctly colored, uh, then D becomes green. So, um, okay, suppose that X is green and Y bar is green. So what happens then? Then it happens then that, uh, this should be red, right? What about this one? Uh, but it could be also blue. It could be blue, but here, no, no, so let's go further. So uh, this one can be either blue or green. So this is either, it could be green, but it also could be blue, right? Yeah, 
yeah, in this combination, uh, D should be, you know, it cannot be green. So this one should also be green or blue, right? So this is either blue or green. So this is not green, right? Because at least one of these two should be green and this should not be green. So this is bad. And uh, let me clean all this. Uh, now the question is as follows. So how can we, uh, how can we color these guys in order for this D to be possible to be green? Yeah, the answer is X implies Y, or the answer is not X or Y, right? So if, suppose that X, suppose that this not X is colored in green, then uh, this one is allowed to be colored in red, right? Or we could also color it in blue, but this is, it will not yield us. So then you could color this in blue. This is always possible because not connect the only blue which is here. And then you can color this in green. So the trick is that um, this vertex D, so, so I will write the letter D once more here. And here is X bar. So this vertex D, which is here, it encodes the uh, clause of the following form. So it is colorable in uh, uh, it's colorable in green if and only if uh, either x bar is true, so x is false. Or the dual thing that y could be green, then this would be red, then this would be green, right? So uh, we, using this three color ability in this very graph with the fixed colors, by the way, for this stuff, we uh, noticed that we can um, define the um, uh, clauses like x bar or y. Now the, the point B, how do you extend this for three variables? We want, we want to encode a three CNF. It's no use for us to encode a two CNF because two CNF is polynomial. If you reduce it to three color, it's well, polynomial to polynomial. But what about uh, the uh, three CNF, the third one? Oh, we'll have to add it somehow. We'll modify this graph in order to add the third one. So of course, well, let's, let me start and then you continue. So um, first thing which we can do, of course, we can introduce a vertex Z and a vertex Z bar, just like this. What should we do next? Yeah, we still have just three colors. Yeah, three colors are as follows. Red is false, G is true, intuitively, and B is neutral. It is the color which is used for making this red and green. Yeah, this is to suggest that you connect them to blue. Connect it like that. So now I want to add a, a dummy vertex like this, right? And where? Well, what should it be? Okay, well, of course, we first have to fix the clause. For, for example, we do it like X bar or Y or Z. We can also do Z bar, then we'll connect to Z. So then we'll do it, yeah, we'll connect a dummy vertex here. And what we'll do next? To D and You want to connect it like this? And then to both of that? No, just one. Uh, which, which one? You cannot do this because you will have K4. It's not the color rule. No, no, no. 
Uh, without D, no, you should have a new D, which will be the. Uh, if you connect it to D. If you connect it to D, okay. And the one of the vertices, the face. To this one. Yes. No, this is correct. It will not do the job. Because um, in this case, you can uh, do stuff like that. You can um, make, for example, I make, uh, I try to falsify, yeah? So I will. Uh, I will write that this is true, uh, this is true, and this is true. So then uh, what, I, what will I have next? I will have that this is false, this is false, this is false. And then this guy, sh what should it do? So this guy should be, so and I want this to be green, right? I want this to be green. Yeah, so no, 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 this is the no, this will not, this will fail because if I falsify this, I will also falsify the small disjunction, right? But I also can satisfy uh, the small disjunction. No, 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 okay, let me think about this a bit. Um, so suppose I have, yep, so I will write blue here. Blue here, red in the middle. On the bottom and change equal to the false. false. No, let, let me clear all and uh, draw it. So, yep, oh, sorry, I did that. Undo maybe. Yep, so what can I do? I uh, I'll undo, 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 undo. So, this is the, the, the picture. So, what is happening? So, if I, if I falsify this, I will falsify also this. So, D will not be. So the idea is that sometimes I can satisfy this, um, but uh, if I satisfy it by Z, for example, so if I drew Z like that, then what's happening here? So here I will have to, so this is allowed to be red, but then what about these two guys? Bottom so one is red and middle one is blue. bottom one is red, but uh, no, I'm not allowed to do it. Suppose I have, uh, suppose here I have green here. Why, why, why you must have green here? No, suppose I, I, I'm considering the following. So suppose I'm considering the following assignment. So Z is true, Y is false, and X is true. Then uh, green is here, uh, green is here. Therefore, reds are going to be here. Yeah, so here we will have, so this guy should be either green or blue. Same for this. This means that one of them should be green, the other should be blue. And therefore red, this is not green. And this is exactly the problem which we have. So we have this, um, we have this sub formula, which is, not x or y. If we falsify this subformula, this d is never green. Therefore, we cannot use the same d, because if we if this is falsified, then this d is not green. But the three clause can still be satisfied because z can be true. So this means that this is not the good thing, and we should. Uh, let me clear all and I will redraw it once more. So here is the, I, I will take like X bar or Y or Z. So this is Z, this is Z bar. Um, so like this and, uh, okay, undo, undo. So this is connects here, this connects here. And we know that we have this sub clause here and we can say in a sense that D represents this sub clause. It's greenable only if, uh, if and only if this is true. Okay. Okay. So again, the good idea is to, to draw a dummy vertex and to connect it to Z. This is nice, but what do we do next? So we have D, we now have D. So 
So we can say that D is not X or Y. And now we have to do another disjunction. How do we encode the disjunction? Well, suppose that this was not, suppose we wanted just to do, I don't know, not Y or Z. How would you do that? You would take not Y, put a dummy here, and then do like this, and this will be the vertex which you need, right? But now what you need to have No, no, not exact. And now you have actually have the following. You have D or Z. How do you model D or Z? No, no, no. Just exactly as here. So you have D. So this is all. I add a dummy. Connect. And this will be new D, which is D3. It's connected like this. So now, how can you satisfy this? So if this guy is satisfiable, then no. Uh, we're constructing a graph. The ask the question is, yeah, first we have to construct, we did a construction, then we're proving that it is correct. How do we prove that it is correct? We, um, we, take the, uh, we take the graph, uh, so we take, no, no, not the graph, we take this, uh, how can we satisfy this clause? When we satisfy this clause, we either satisfy D, so this part, or we satisfy Z. So this means that there are two cases. Either this is green, or this is green. So if this is green, then we are allowed to make this dummy red. So the dummies are actually the negations of this. If we make this red, then we are allowed to make this blue. And when we do this, we are allowed to make the final vertex greenish. And dually, if we have Z, which is green, then this is red, this is blue, and this is green. So this means that D3, if we have a satisfying assignment for, for this, then D3 is going to be greenable. It can be colored in green. Great. Okay, so now we are, are for the point C, which is the hardest one in this assignment. How can we construct a graph for, um, for the Boolean formula? In order to convey this fibrate. I'll write this stuff, but I will keep the, the graphs. So what is uh, now a phi? Phi is a 3 CNF. So phi is a the clause one disjunction of no, sorry, conjunction conjunction. Conjunction clause two. Conjunction clause. Yeah, first you add all the variables and you include these special vertices G, B, R. And then you, uh, for each clause, you do the following gadget. So the gadget is uh, for each clause, there is, th this is the gadget which you should add for any clause. So if, for example, so this is for a clause, some CI, which is x bar or y or z. And the number of these pairs is this, the, the same as the number of, of, of 
And then what you get, you get that you can uh, make these all these vertices green, if and only if you, uh, uh, your, your uh, CNF is satisfiable, right? Because then you can obtain correct colors for that and make this green. But it's not exactly the three colorability problem. What is the difference here? Why it is not the same as being three colorable? Because you have extra conditions on the coloring. So first you impose all these to be green. And second, you impose these guys to be red, green, blue. So the color of this uh, palette here is fixed. How can you overcome that? In our graph, we can do arbitrary recoloring. Well, first, how can you uh, impose this to be green? How can you require this vertex to be green? No, no. Uh, in your coloring, so what we have done by now, our formula is satisfiable if and only if all these vertices, which are associated with the clauses, these guys, if all of them can be made green, right? Now we have a graph, the same graph, and we just ask for an arbitrary three coloring. And in this graph, we have to express the idea that these vertices should be green. And what are these vertices which should not be red or green? These are these guys, red and blue. So if we connect, yeah, if we can do the following connections, I will make it a bit bigger. So if we take the, oh, each of these vertices and we connect it here and we connect it here, then this vertex should be always green because otherwise we fail. So this is the first thing. And the second thing, which is uh, actually, actually graph construction is finished by now. But uh, we're going to ask another question. What uh, would happen, why uh, should these vertices be colored in red, green, blue? We are not allowed to impose such constraints. Because how do we say that these colors are, maybe this is going to be green, this is going to be red, this is going to be blue, and uh, all the things. Are... With, with which? Uh, the problem is that we do not actually, this is not a problem. We don't need to build anything more. Because uh, we call these colors red, green, blue. But abstractly, they're just colors. They're just names of colors. We, cons we start, the, we, we can construct this graph. We, the, our hypothetic algorithm gives us a three color of this graph. And then we just say, okay, let's call this color red, this color green, and this color blue. It's our uh, free choice to assign names to the color. So this part of the graph, which we call the palette, it actually gives us the names for these colors. So we reduced ourselves to a three color problem and we, uh, we given a Boolean formula, we construct this Boolean, this graph, which is called by the way, G5. And so formula is 3CNF. And uh, in this graph, there is a specific part, which is the palette. And from this palette, we read the colors. We call this color red, this color green, and this color blue. They are distinct three colors because this palette is a triangle. And then while this color is called green, if the formula is satisfiable, then we can fill in all the gadgets and color this in green. And this will yield the correct coloring because this is connected to red and green, but not to uh, blue, but not to green. If the formula is not satisfiable, then at least one clause is not, then it, at least one clause is false at each coloring. They will try to color it. This guy will become not green. If we color red, 
blue and this will fail to finish the coloring because these are two connections which connect to red and blue. Red to the power. So the color, the names of the colors are obtained from the coloring. This is a funny thing here. Just what has to happen. Examples of things to come. Okay, so is this, is this uh, understandable? Is this clear? How to prove it? So we have proved this reduction and now let's show that the problem is, so I will now clear all this stuff. Maybe I will save it before. Somewhere, I don't know where it's, let's save it somewhere in project. Clear all drawings. And then I'll show the three colors in P-complete. This is the final point and well, let's just say the standard words we should say in this situation. What sort of reduction have we performed by our construction of G5? So let me recall, just as in a bird eye view. So we have done the following from formula phi, which is a three CNF, by some function, which is of course polynomial computable, we constructed a graph G phi such that phi is satisfiable if and only if G phi is three colorable. We did this, right? What does this reduction prove? What, 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 what does this fun what sort of reducibility does this reduction function establish? What problem is reduced to what? Hmm? Or what is the left hand side? When well, it's three CNF and we check it satisfiably, how is this problem called? Three set, right? And three set is reduced to what? So three color, yeah. three color ability. So to today's lecture and at the beginning of today's class, we did the reversal thing. We did the reducibility of three color to three set, which is meaningless because it's just cook evidence. But uh, here we reduce three sat to three color. And the corollary of that is that um, since this is NP hard because it's Satan, this means that three color is NP complete. Okay, so we have proved an NP completeness of yet another problem, which is a three coloring problem. Okay, so uh, this is the final uh, thing we did in this class. I thank all of you for listening. And uh, well, unfortunately, we didn't have time to uh, talk about independent sets and uh, stuff like that. But uh, the time is um, actually finishing and um, so I don't see any questions in the chat so it's I think it's okay now. Uh, again thank you for attending this class thank you for listening and as for exam it will, all the things will be published on the courses web page so stay tuned some people are on the chat also asking things the, the exam will be next uh, Wednesday in the morning we'll publish the um, the assi assignment for the exam and in the midday will be the deadline. Yeah, so everything will be published on the web page in a prompt manner, so you will can see that also. So um, thanks a lot, and uh, we'll finish right now. Thank you.